Leo, welcome to your November and December 2017 prosperity reading. It's Raina here. So what I'm going to be doing is telling you about a few astrological transits that are affecting you in the next two months, the end of 2017. And then I'm going to pick, I believe it's four of the Oracle cards. And in a past reading, I think I pretty much said that it was the year of Leo going into 2018 because she had two new moons in the summer and one of them was a solar eclipse. You're going to have in 2018, and I believe it's on the 31st of January, you're going to have a full moon in your sign, but there's going to be other stuff that happens that like the North Node is in your sign. So there's that kind of date with destiny feel to it. And I created Prosperity Affirmations for each sign. For you, I say, I honor my natural leadership skills by listening to and honoring others, and yet still sharing my many talents with the world. And the best leaders are not tyrants, they're people who are very interested in listening to other people's input. And it's always very heartening if you're dealing with that type of person, if they are in a position of authority over you, because you know that they will take your feelings into account. And that is really the best way to look at life, obviously, especially when you're in charge of other people which a lot of Leos are, that's why I, I said that. Okay, and then I wrote down some of the transits. So in the month of November, Mars is in Libra, and that's your third house of communication. So you ruled the fifth house, which has to do with love and creativity and things like that. The third house is Gemini's natural house. So all of those Gemini things, including the internet, because Leos are natural showmen, you may be interested in starting a YouTube channel or some other way of getting your own creativity out there to the masses and having a chance to express yourself. And that would be you really working hard in getting this up and running. It could be also somebody who is doing a lot of training um, for some, maybe you have some job that you want to get a promotion or an advancement and you have to go through special training to get there and then you get more money and you get a different title. There's going to be a new moon in your fifth house in Sagittarius on December 18th. And, and Saturn has been in this house. This is your house. I just said that. This is... Um, the house that you rule and the sun will the sun is your ruler so the sun goes there earlier in November on the 21st and then in December we have the new moon there we have let me see what other planets will be joining there well Jupiter in, in, in uh, November, there's a lot of plants that it, I would call good juju, <laughs> for lack of a better term, in your fourth house of home and family. And these are Scorpio placements. So around the time of that new moon on November 18th, you're going to have the sun and moon in that sector, Venus and Jupiter. So that is really auspicious as well. And because it's dealing with real estate, that might be some way that you have financial gain at the end of this year. And it could also come through family members. Because Mars is in the third house as November begins, that could possibly indicate that you're fighting with siblings. The third house can be siblings. So that might be over some kind of money or property 
that some family members think belongs to them and others wants them to share and stuff like that. So let's see what else. So Saturn, which is this energy, this influence that wants us to be disciplined, is going into your sixth house on, I believe it's around December 20th. So in your sixth house, Leo, this can be a time when you really get down to business. Uh, Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn, the sign, the sign uh, that rules the, the tenth house of career, and Saturn is its ruler, so it rules the tenth house as well. And th this is an earth house, Capricorn's house, but so is the sixth house, which is Virgo's house. So Saturn can be very good in this house, but the sixth house is also about your health. So you may have to really look at your health because Saturn can tend to put the screws on things to make people change, to make people uh, improve. You know, it's, it can be a time of self-improvement. So if you know you have to change your lifestyle, then you probably um, will have a lot of support for that with Capricorn there, with um, Saturn there in Capricorn. And the other thing that this can mean is that you have this real work ethic and you're able to, even if you're not doing something right at this moment that you are just in love with, you still are, your eyes are on the prize. You know what you want and you're going to do it. You have a game plan uh, for the next few years of how much money you want to make, what you're going to do with that money, and you're all business. But what's nice is if you were looking for love and you've been feeling a little bit like it's it's been not that easy to obtain, Saturn in the leaving the fifth house can be a breath of fresh air for you. So that's something to look forward to as well. And, December 20th. But then you're going to become more serious because of Saturn in the 6th house, so it's all good. And uh, what else did I want to tell you? I'm trying to think if there's any other situation. Oh, well, there's going to be a full moon in your career sector on November 4th. So full moons in the 10th house of career and your reputation in the world can mean that you feel like you are in the spotlight, that people are seeing what you've been up to and they're pretty darn impressed by it. It can indicate a promotion. It can indicate some kind of a culmination of something that you've been working on. And that can feel like you're really uh, on center stage where you like to be, Leo. So yeah, it's a good time for you, that's for sure. Okay, the first um, card here is going to be from the Energy Oracle deck. Anxiety, well, it's upside down, that's a good sign. Because <laughs> I, know, I know this deck uses reversed cards, so that sounds like that's going to be a good one. And now I got two decks that have native or Earth themes. This one is the Native Spirit deck, Native American ideas, and the other one is the Earth Magic. <laughs> I think I just got this one, Flowing River. Okay, Earth Magic. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh. Well, I just got a new smartphone, so if you hear that, I'm not going to do anything, but obviously I didn't turn off notifications, which is kind of irritating. But um, I got the camera rolling, so... I don't want to mess with that. Okay. I just got this for another sign. 
Joan of Arc, Voice of Truth. Okay. So let's start with the um, Sandra Ann Taylor Energy Oracle deck and we'll see what anxiety means in the reverse position. Finally, relief. This nightmare of a card reversed could mean one of two things. Either a recent problem is on its way out, causing you to feel more relaxed, or you have mastered the old habit of worry and have freed yourself from the anxiety within. Either way, anxiety reversed is a good omen of more relaxed and peaceful times to come. Maintain a trusting attitude and let the difficulties and fierce thoughts fade away into the distance. Your affirmation is, I let go of fear and worry. I assume the best and live in peace. All is well. Wonderful. It was just 11-11 when I said that. So maybe that's the date when you're going to really feel it. Okay, now this one is made of spirit. Everything is falling into place because you aren't resisting the drift of the great river of life. It's time to let go. You're entering a period of gracious ease and flow. All is unfolding perfectly and with good timing. When you're in a state of flow, you aren't pushing the river to go faster and you aren't swimming against it. Let go of the shore and enjoy the ride. Rivers have personalities and carry energy just as animals and plants do. From the Maoris to the Australian Aborigines and to other native cultures throughout the world, it's believed that it's important to listen to the language of the river. If you aren't feeling the smooth currents of life, it might mean that you're trying to control situations or that you're being self-critical or judgmental. The way to move into flow is through gratitude and appreciation and by allowing others to support and help you. Heed the Native Americans saying, it's best to ride the horse the direction that it's going. This means that when the card flowing river chooses you, you're being told to let go and go with the flow. If there's something or someone you need to forgive, this is your time. This is also the time to forgive yourself and just let go. As you shower and the water flows over your body, imagine that everything is flowing in your life. Spend time next to a river or stream and watch the flowing waters. Use it as a metaphor to let go and enter the flow. And um, I would just add that in uh, Abraham Hicks with Law of Attraction, they talk about going downstream. And that means that you're not fighting the current. But, you know, people don't get it. They seem to go too extreme in one direction. Going with the flow doesn't mean that you're just sitting around uh, eating bonbons all day. It means that you are doing your part and then you're leaving the rest up to the universe. But it certainly does not mean that you can't do anything regarding your situation. Okay. And then the next one is river movement and we're looking at the Earth magic. Where is that? Yeah. You can't even see that. Fighting or blocking the flow of your life force can lead you to feeling spiritually void and disconnected from source. Just like the metaphor of the river, it does not work to force or fight this compelling movement. When you simply pay attention and observe the flow, it becomes easier to navigate your experiences and see what lies ahead, or at least get a sense of what is to come 
by the ever-changing geography that unfolds as you cruise along. Your resistance is hampering your ability to make a choice in this matter. Surrender to the movement of life, be grateful, and you will see the signs along the shore and in the river itself that offer you clues about what direction your egoless self is to be making. Go with the flow is more than a trite affirmation here. It is essential that you do so now. Breathe, relax, and you will know. I like that. And then we have Joan of Arc. It says, Voice of Truth, stand strong, focus on your purpose, release the fear of persecution, and speak your truth. Usually, Leos don't have that problem, but, um, you know, not every Leo is created equally. Some Leos are going to have influence from Cancer, the sign preceding you, or Virgo, the sign after you. And uh, that those two signs may be more reticent about speaking up. Joan of Arc was a medieval French peasant girl who is reported to have been visited by Archangel Michael and other saints who gave her information on how she could help Charles VII save France from English domination. She was only a teenager when she went into battle for her country and won a huge victory. She was, however, later captured and burned at the stake. These days, she is a supremely loving guide to all those who want to stand up against the odds. She also helps many light workers overcome their fear of persecution. You are being encouraged to stand strong. You may feel unrecognized and misunderstood, but that doesn't mean you have to give up on the mission you feel called to fulfill. You must follow the will of your soul and exercise your leadership spirit by speaking your truth. You may feel as if you are on a battlefield, but this conflict will come to an end as soon as you stop defending yourself. You are not here to prove yourself to others. Instead, approve of yourself. Know that your angels are on your side and that heaven is thanking you for being the honest soul you are. Well, that's nice. And um, one thing that I want to say about that card is when you talk about um, prosperity, a lot of people, why well, maybe that's an exaggeration, let's just say some people, fall into the trap of thinking that whatever it takes to get money, that's what you do. And I remember when I was working in a health food store and I wasn't getting any kind of commission by how many products I could sell. I mean, they had contests, but you know, just on a regular basis. But I was very concerned about my part in encouraging people to buy supplements just based on, oh wow, they're making these claims. Because I really believe in um, that way of living. But I also believe that I, I mean, that's going off into a tangent about my beliefs on health, but just put, putting it generally, I felt like promoting supplements without talking about the overall things that are happening in somebody's life it would be unethical for me. So if somebody said, I'm, you know, I'm working 12 hours a day and I need something for energy, what can I have here? Um, if I said, oh yeah, this is like, you know, take this, you're going to be up all day, you know, or all night. That is, to me, that's not really helping them with their health. So I used to say to people in that position, well, why are you working 12 hours a day? You know, that, that, you know that's a logical thing. You have to, re if you want good health, you have to rearrange your lifestyle to include it. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't burn the candle at both ends and have good health. If you're not hardly if you're hardly sleeping and you're taking something, even if it's natural, that is stimulating. So sometimes people saw that I was being honest and they appreciated it. Same with what I'm doing right now. I have to be honest with when I'm doing personal readings. I can't 
uh, tell people what they want to hear. Do you know how easy that would be? So the same thing applies to you and, and what you're doing. You will be blessed and you will sleep well at night if you know that you are being an ethical person. And if you, if you think that it, you have to do whatever it takes to earn money, then maybe you'll really um, do well, but you may, in the long run, feel not so good about yourself. So this is what I'm talking about. You know, we live holistic lives. We don't just compartmentalize our lives. It's not, all, oh, wow, I'm making a lot of money right now, but what are you doing? Are you doing things that are ethical? that are helping people, or are you doing things just to help yourself? And so, you know, that's all of these cards I can tie into um, prosperity. Not worrying is very important. Not only because you run your, your body and mind down when you worry, but it also suggests that you don't believe that you are divinely protected. And the two cards that deal with the flowing river, you're a fixed sign. So I could totally see why a fixed sign wants things, wants to control things, because you don't necessarily like change that much. And life is all about change. There's no way to get around that. And I remember reading or watching some kind of a psychic type of person, and he or she said something to the effect of, those souls that are currently inflexible and have a hard time adapting, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it because th this world is, th th the shifts are happening at such a breathtaking pa pace that we have to be up for anything. And there's no room to be resistant at this point. When people say resist, that's like, <laughs> That's a crazy thing to do. There's a, there's a saying, what you resist persists. Resistance is not the answer to having your life flow. The flowing river is about non-resistance. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, Leo. If you'd like a personal reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome rest of 2017. Bye.